Okay, people, time to learn some phrasal verbs. But before we start, I need to remind you that there are three types. Type one takes no object. Type two takes an object but can't be separated. And then type three takes an object and can be separated. Now, if this doesn't make much sense to you, don't worry. Last week, I uploaded a very useful video on basic phrasal verb grammar. You know that we students hate phrasal verbs, right? I know, I know, but there are a few things that you need to know. So, if you're unsure about phrasal verbs and phrasal verb grammar, click on that link up there and check out that video first. Now, I know that many of you are learning English for work. So today on Learning English with Lily, I thought I would give you 10 really useful phrasal verbs that you can use to impress your colleagues in a work environment. For each phrasal verb, I'll tell you the type, the meaning, and I'll also give you an example sentence. The first one is fill in. Now you've probably heard of one meaning of fill in, which is to complete information by writing or typing it into a box. For example, I could say, please fill in this form carefully. This is the third type of phrasal verb, which means it takes an object and it can be separated. However, you might not have heard of another meaning of fill in, which is to do somebody's job for a temporary period of time. For example, if Jenny is off, Sandra normally fills in. And here it's a type one phrasal verb, which means it takes no object. The next phrasal verb is break something down. If you break something down, you separate it into smaller parts. And in a work context, that normally means you make information easier to understand. For example, the new procedure seemed confusing until Jessica broke it down into three easy steps. This is another type three phrasal verb. Spell something out is also type three, and it means explain something in a very simple way, giving details. So it's similar to break something down, uh, but with break something down, it means more break it down into steps or into sections, whereas spelling something out means you are simplifying the information and giving lots of detail. An example for spell something out, I didn't really understand the task, so my boss spelt it out to me in an email. Call off is also type three, and it means cancel. For example, everyone had lots to do, so management called off the Monday meeting. Set something up. So there are two very useful meanings of set up within a business context. First of all, if you set up a business or organization or a department within a business, uh, then you start it. So for example, they decided to set up a communications department. But set up can also mean arrange for something to take place. For example, they set up a meeting to discuss the new product. Catch up on something is next. It's a type two phrasal verb, which means it takes an object, but it can't be separated. Catch up on something means do an activity that you haven't been able to do recently. For example, the phones were pretty quiet today, so I managed to catch up on my emails. Chip in is type one, and it means contribute. This normally means uh, giving money towards something, so contributing money. However, it can also mean giving your time. It was the boss's birthday, so everyone chipped in a fiver. By the way, a fiver is five pounds. A tenner is 10 pounds. A quid is a pound. These are very common colloquial alternatives. I've just realized while editing this video that in my example sentence, chip in is a type two phrasal verb, not a type one. So we could say it was the boss's birthday, so everyone chipped in a fiver or everyone chipped in with a fiver also works. However, chip in can be a type one where it takes no object. So we could uh, change the sentence. The boss's birthday present cost 30 pounds and everyone in the office chipped in. 
go over something is next. It's a type two phrasal verb, and I think it's really useful within a work context. It means have a look at or explain something again. So if you've just started a new job and someone's training you, and they've just shown you something that you don't really understand, you could say, can we go over that one more time, please? I love the next phrasal verb, pencil something in. It's type three, and it means make a tentative arrangement with someone. So you know that it will probably have to be confirmed nearer the time, and it may be changed. You could ask your manager if they had a spare 10 minutes to go over something, and they could reply, I'm pretty busy this week, but let's pencil you in for Friday morning. The final phrasal verb, go under, is unfortunately pretty relevant at the moment in the context of COVID-19. It's a type one phrasal verb and it means fail financially, so become bankrupt. After closing for several months due to coronavirus, many restaurants have gone under. And there we go, 10 useful phrasal verbs for the work environment. You can use them to impress your colleagues at work, unless you don't speak English at work, in which case you'll probably just become known as the weirdo who likes to use random English phrasal verbs. Okay, subscribe and share and like please as always, and I will see you all in a week's time.